What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Zay, and damn, it feel like it's been a minute, but we back. Welcome back to Setup Sunday. Uh, I think the last time we did an update was like end of August, going into September, man. And uh, we did a what does the market, you know, how far can the market go? What does it look like? And we walked through some levels. And so it's been, you know, a whole month now um, since things have progressed. And so Today, we're going to do a little bit of a market update. Um, as most of you know, uh, I tend to try to take a longer perspective on the market, which is why I really haven't been doing the week to week thing, uh, because you got to get a market time to let things play out. So uh, what we're going to do today in this episode is we're going to look at, of course, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, um, and we'll go through those charts and really uh, talk about where do we see the market going the rest of October into November and into the end of the year, just to give people a perspective. Um, and of course, I'll give you guys some key levels to pay attention to. So um, before we get into it, just wanna put a disclaimer out there. This is not financial advice or uh, should be taken as financial um, advice. Always consult with your financial advisor. Um, and so, yeah, well, like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop right into it. Um, and the reason today's video will probably be short and sweet, we'll just go through the levels uh, and look at a few charts is because uh, I'm working on a follow up video of I get a lot of questions of people asking, how do you develop or how do I personally develop um, my investing thesis? So I'm doing a follow up video that will be released later this week on you know, how do I develop fundamental and technical thesis? So that's going to be a fire, fire video. So you're definitely going to want to want to, you're definitely going to want to watch that one later this week. Uh, but for now, uh, people have been asking. So we're just going to go through some levels and kind of give you guys an update of, you know, what's been going on. We just had a market correction. Uh, and some people, you know, are like, is this rally real? So we're going to answer a few of those questions today. So make sure you stick around. Uh, again, before we jump into it, please, please make sure you press that like button as well as subscribe to my channel so that when whenever I drop new content, you are in the know. Um, but let's get into it without further ado. And of course, the first chart we're going to get into is, of course, the NASDAQ. All right, good people. So as you can see, we are on a monthly chart. This is the NASDAQ. You guys know we like to kick it off. So I'm going to try to make this brief and quick. We're going to run through the levels, and I'm going to try to give you some perspective. Number one, let's start from high level time frames because, again, I think this tells a true story of direction. Where does the market look like it's going? Looks like it wants to continue going up. We got our trend line to the top, which is our upper trend line, and we got our lower trend line right here. And then this is a trend line that goes from the open of 2021 to what our target is for 2023 um which is 18,000 so you can see 2023 18,000 so these trend lines always give me perspective always give me perspective now um what are we looking forward to you know the rest of October going into November well what I'm actually paying attention to is can October maintain this monthly candle status like ultimately what I could see happening for the rest of October depending on earnings season is that October, we continue to go to the upside. So I have some levels to pay attention to and I'll kind of zoom down so you can see how I got to these levels. But the next levels to the upside we really need to pay attention to is gonna be about 14,955, uh, 15,050, and then 15,160 for the NASDAQ or the IXIC, All right? To the downside, what we wanna pay attention to is uh, August is open. so um, while October is looking like it's a very bullish month, we could reverse this, these last two weeks and come back down. So if we were to reverse a little bit, uh, support would definitely be here, right? Set 14,760. Then our next area of support is going to be in this gap area, which is basically this monthly close on July. So that gives us 14,675. And then our final area of support would approximately be in this area where we open, which is 14,500. If we break 14,500, uh, game over. We're probably gonna be coming back down to this trend line of about 14,176 um, and ending the, month, ending the month somewhere around 14,000. Now, 
again, we're talking about two weeks worth of price price action. So I'm not saying all oh, that's going to happen next week or anything, but just to give you some perspective. And if we break it down uh, to a weekly chart, right? So these are weekly candles. You can see what I mean, right? Now, this right here is definitely a bullish reversal pattern because you have a wick rejection here and weakness. Then you have a strong, you have more uh, weakness, but then you have rejection. And then you have a bullish engulfing candle uh, that pretty much engulfed this whole reversal. Now, it would have been super bullish if we could have closed at 14,955. So ultimately what we're looking for next week is, is some more follow through, right? We definitely want to get more follow through. And if we can get a weekly close at about that 15,000, uh, and 46, that would be amazing uh, because then officially we have engulfed uh, this, this bearish candle. Now, what am I kind of expecting? I think we could probably be stuck in a little bit of a range between this uh, 14,955 all the way down to about this 14,759, maybe even dipping as low as 14,675. And the reason being is because when you go to a daily perspective, we have some gaps. So going into next week, be aware that we do have some gaps. Um, it is very possible that Monday could, you know, we could have a gap up and be very bullish and say, hey, come Monday, we continue this upward trajectory. We open at about this 14,955 and we close at 15,050 only for the rest of the week to be, I guess, I'd say bearish, but really what would happen is we would just come up and then we will start to reverse a little bit to come fill this gap, which might be a buying opportunity. And we could, I just don't know if we have enough in this, but I, you know, we could always come back down and look to fill this gap. And then from here, we would then, you know, kind of finish our trajectory uh, and bounce from this area going back up, right? So that's kind of what I am paying attention to on the NASDAQ. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the SPX um, chart, right? So uh, looking at the SPX, let's go to a monthly perspective. Again, I'm going to show you guys what I am looking at. So from a monthly perspective, and sorry for, you know, these data lines, but these are uh, expirations that I'm looking at. So when we look at the SPX, again, we had a 4.76% set, 4.76% pullback. Uh, and if you look at this small little wick, we came down to 4281, which put us right at about 5%. So what I'm paying attention to on the SPX for the rest of this month, for the next two weeks or so, is where do we close the month of October? Would love to see October close at either this 4471. It's possible we could go up to 4495, basically 4500 and get rejected, right? And then that'll give us like this type of wick top. So we would go up to here and then probably pull back a little bit back down to this 4470 where we end the month or even end the month at uh, 4438. Yep, 4438 would be that uh, level, right? Um, that's where we would want the next two weeks to kind of play out. Now, what happens if we keep going further down? Well, then ultimately, that's not really a good sign, but we do have support at 4400. Uh, we'd have some support at 4430. We potentially could have some support up in this area, which is again, 4400, 4439, uh, 43.95. Uh, and then you have a wick here. So that's 43.67. Now, if all of this stuff kind of gives way, more than likely we're gonna be revisiting much more of that downside. And then we do have some more gaps that come all the way down to about 41.80. Now, again, I'm not expecting that to happen anytime soon, but just to give you guys perspective of why people were aiming for 4,200 and et cetera, et cetera, is because they figured we come clean this area up because these are monthly gaps, right? Monthly gaps. Now, let's dig in a little bit. Let's look at the weekly chart. So from a weekly perspective, again, you have this nice bullish um, roundabout or reversal, right? You got wick rejection, wick rejection, wick rejection. That's three rejections and a fourth rejection of where they, they tried to push the market, but buyers came in, buyers came in, buyers came in, buyers came in, right? Now, this candle is a complete bullish engulfing because we closed above 4441. Uh, and if anybody follows me on Twitter, um, I said about two weeks ago, the magic number was this 44, uh, 4441. And then, you know, people ask, well, how did I get it? Because this is where we open, right? This is, this is that simple. 
Um, TA does not have to be rocket science, y'all. So um, we closed above that. So what this signals to me is that we are very much in a bullish trend. So coming into next week, we could be coming to hit this trend line. So I would be looking out for resistance, as I said, at 4,500, 4,494 or 44.95. Uh, if that happens, then what I suspect is that we could probably get here and maybe have a little bit of a sell-off and come back down to, again, our level of 44.30. Reason being, look at this beautiful candle. It matches perfectly. Um, so from a weekly perspective, that's what I'll kind of be paying attention to. Um, if we go down to a daily perspective, just to give you guys a little bit more context, um, you can see we do have two major gap ups um, and you know typically the, the gaps do get filled. However, pay attention to your moving averages as they start to curl up, that could be less likely uh, or it's just gonna take a, a, a while before we come back and actually fill those gaps. So um, as, we, as, we, as you can see, we just finished the monthly OPEX for October. So again, the reason why I feel like we could go to 495 is because we've done it before. Look where, if you just go back and look at this past price action. Now, this is why I said, be careful because there's a lot of sellers in this area. You can see there's a bunch of selling here, a bunch of selling here. You got a sell candle here. You got another, some sell candles here. So uh, if we get to 495, be careful um, because we could definitely sell off and come close this gap, which is why we said, hey, 438 would be an area of support. We've done it before, sell off here, sell off here, sell off here. So just pay attention to that. Um, it's going to take a hell of a sell-off to break this candle, uh, to break through this candle. So do we come close this gap? It's possible. I don't think we would do it anytime soon simply because we had a bunch of sellers here and a bunch of sellers here. And as you can see, these candles um, are not as heavy as it was early in the correction. So that means that the selling pressure is slowing down or basically sellers are getting exhausted. Um, and so at worst, we could have a slight pullback, maybe to 4430, and they could even try to push it to come touch our moving average, which will bring us down to 4400. But again, to me personally, those will be buying opportunities. I don't know how you feel, but that's just what I'm watching. So that's a little bit of the SPX to the upside and downside of what to pay attention to. All right. So let's do the Dow Jones next, and then we'll do the SPY and the QQQ. And we'll look at Bitcoin and stuff like that as well. So getting into the Dow Jones, uh, if we look at the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones has been doing pretty, pretty good. So again, looking at it from a monthly perspective, right? We had a 4.29% uh, pullback. So it didn't get quite the 5% pretty close. And then now look at this. This is looking to be or shaping up to be a very bullish engulfing candle. If the freaking that, if the NASDAQ, <laughs> if the Dow Jones gets back above this open price, which is 35,387, that is very, very bullish, very bullish. Um, and then that means for the next two months, we could possibly be seeing more upward um, pressure, right? Now, let's dig into this a little bit and really see what's going on. So from a weekly perspective, um, we have the same thing, rejection, 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 rejection. Um, and then you have pretty much a really bullish candle engulfing all of these, um, I guess you could say, I wouldn't say they were short sellers, but just, you know, basically people trying to push the market down. Um, and with that being said, this now should open us up to at least attempt to get back to all time highs. So next week, could we see the Dow Jones push to roughly 35.5? We surely can. However, that's where sellers will probably step in again because if people bought back here, they're finally breaking even and they're like, F this, I'm getting out. I broke even, I'm, I'm taking some money off the table. You also got people who were smart enough and bought down here, right? Buyers came in and pushed the price up that when they get back to all-time highs, they'll say, hey, I made enough profit that I'm gonna take some profit. So we could probably stall out around this 35.5, right? Um, and if we do, where will we come back to? Probably come back to about 35,000 because look at this candle here. And if they wanted to push it a little bit deeper, again, we probably have, they probably will push us to a max of about this 34,858 roughly, right? Because you got some wicks up in here. Uh, again, more touches, more touches. You could just see how this is a nice area or was an area of resistance, which now will become support. 
Uh, if we go to the day chart, just so you can see the gaps and know what you need to be aware of, again, um, look where we closed and look to the left to see what happened in prior price action. So this is why I'm saying, hey, is it possible we could go, you know, shoot to 35.5? It's very possible, right? However, if we get there, look what happened last time. They sold us down. We do have a gap up in this area. So if we push up, they could probably come push us down only for us to get bought back up. And then we push through all time highs and we aim to get to 36,000. So that's kind of, um, you know, the, the take I have on the market and kind of the situation um, that I'm looking, uh, that I'll, I'm anticipating plays out. You know, I'm always remain agile, my friends. Um, keep a thesis, but remain agile because if news come out or variables change, you need to be able to adjust. So right now we're looking very bullish. Um, I'm gonna stay a bull. Um, because it's a bull market. So we could push up, but I'm not, you know, not saying that, hey, we can't come back. And if we do, for those who missed this bottom, that could be an opportunity for you to get in as the market continues to push up. So we knocked out the NASDAQ. We looked at the SPX. We looked at the Dow Jones. Now I'm going to go to everybody's fan favorite, which is the SPY. Uh, and again, let me go just get back to the monthly. Now this is going to mirror the SPX. <laughs> because they pretty much track each other. So like you see, 4.97% uh, pullback, roughly got to about five when we hit this low, and now we are bouncing. So what are the levels to pay attention to over the next couple of weeks? As you can see, fairly bullish candle, wick rejection, wick rejection, wick rejection, wick rejection. All of this is very much bullish. Um, and so now what we want to see is, can we get a third week of follow through? Um, so when you see where we are at and where we close, this is the candle that I'm very much so paying attention to, to see, do we mirror this? Meaning, do we come back down to about, what is that, 444? I think this candle hit a low of uh, 443, but we closed at 450. So when I look at, from a daily perspective, right? And just to give you guys more perspective is, hey, on Monday, do we gap up? All right, and maybe potentially we gap up to 448, 447 or so. Um, and when we get there, uh, do we sell off, right? Because again, like I said, there's a big sell wall up in this area, as well as you can see this candle here. So they may push us up and then bring us back down. As you can see, I have a beautiful trend line here um, and we could probably can close this gap, hit my trend line at 442 and then look to bounce to continue going up. Or we gap up and they push us down a little bit further and we come touch somewhere up in here about 439, 440 to really shake some people out because you have, again, you have some action in here uh, and then look to bounce and recover. This will give your 20 days some time to catch up, but these are curling up. So again, a couple of scenarios that can happen that you just need to plan for and prepare for. But overall, as we continue to move through October and go to November, I do believe that ultimately this is a very bullish chart um, and that will continue our bullish momentum as long as earnings season and guidance is looking good. We'll usually get that Santa rally going through November um, and December. So just things to keep in mind, right? So th that's pretty much what you need to pay attention to on the SPY. So upside, it's pretty much capped at about 448. We could get to 450, but that's pushing it. Even if we get there, I believe people will be taking profit. So definitely watch out for us to sell off back down to about 444. Come close this gap at about 442. At worst, probably get to 439. Uh, if you have long-term positions, nothing to be scared or get shook out about. Again, I don't think we'll be revisiting these lows anytime soon. So that's the SPY. Let's get into the triple Qs. Same situation is going to mirror the NASDAQ as we already have seen. Um, look at that. The uh, triple Qs actually gave us 5.79% in the month of September. Went even a little bit lower um, and gave you guys a great entry at 350, um, you know, in, in the, inter, in the um, interim. So what do we be paying attention to for the rest of this month on the Qs? Would love for the triple Qs to at least close the month at 368, meaning that we close above July's high. That would keep us on track to continue going north. All right. Now, um, at worst, what we want to see is that it maintains 364, which would be, again, July's close. 
uh, to get extra, extra bullish. If it could get to back to 375, 376, or even the street 80, be phenomenal, be phenomenal. Let's look at the weekly chart. Again, you can see how we had a nice downtrend, weakness, we have major rejection, uh, indecision doji, and then we got a nice bounce. Looks like decision is made. Again, it's not entirely bullish because we didn't engulf or close this candle. So the close or the open on that was 370.20. So it'd be very pivotal or very key for us to get past 370. That's going to be an area of resistance, right? Now, if we do, look what happened uh, August 23rd. We had a very bullish candle here. So hopefully we can get another week like that and we close the week at 375 ultimately indicating um, a bullish trend. To the downside, again, we have some support here at 364. 364 gives way, we need to see 360 hold. If 360 doesn't hold, ultimately 357. And God forbid if 357 gives way, um, we got a long, we probably got a long way down. I will be probably watching 342 at that point in time. Now it's gonna be stair stepper, but that's basically where the market's gonna be headed. Uh, so just keep that into perspective when you're looking at the cues. If we look at a one day, just some gaps that you guys need to be aware of. Um, you can now see that, hey, the reason why I'm thinking that we get to 375 is because that's where our Bollinger Bands is. You can also see we have some nice bullish activity in this area. However, big rejection sell wall here. So we'll have some trouble and more than likely people will take profit and sell us up, sell us off back down to about this 369, 368. You got a gap here. You also have a pretty decent size gap that goes down to 360. So just be aware of that. Um, again, like I said, don't think we'll be coming down here anytime soon, um, but it is a possibility and you just need to be prepared for that and plan for that just in case it happens. Because if it gets here, I'll be doing some shopping. Um, so that is the triple Qs. Uh, we usually like to look at the DIA, which is similar to the Dow. Um, and let me go to the monthly. Again, saying it's going to look just like the Dow, right? So it gave us a 4.42% pullback. Uh, and then look at that, it bounced right off of our 337. Uh, and again, if we can get to our 354, hella bullish. Uh, as long as we maintain a monthly close at 349, 350, we do maintain our upward trajectory. And then we'll be looking for November to kind of continue that push even into December. So if we break it down on a weekly perspective, again, uh, I, I'm going to change it to a line graph because I want you guys to be able to see, look at this nice bottoming process right here. Like, look how it came and touch these areas. Nice W as well, beautiful W, right? And that's why I feel like when you get one of these type of Ws, uh, and you're looking at from next week, you got one or two scenarios that are going to play out. Either we're going to, this thing's going to continue shooting and we're going to have a weekly close at about 355, or we can get a nice small little pullback and we'll end at about 349, right? You got a touch here, you got a touch here. That's why I'm like, hey, these are going to be the key zones that we need to pay attention to because when you usually get a nice W, you either will get like this pullback and then what happens is that creates a lightning bolt effect, right? So if we do a pullback here, then the next week, the next couple of weeks, we'd be looking for the market to kind of shoot up like that, create that lightning bolt effect. Um, and that's going to be a beautiful sight because that means we're breaking out. So that is the uh, DIA, the Dow Jones, um, just some, uh, I'm sorry, let me make sure I give you guys the gaps. So if you're looking at the gaps and you want to be like, hey, what are the downside I need to protect myself? Uh, 351 down to about 349. As you can see, there was a sell-off like this before. And I mean, look how it just lines up perfectly. So if we get down to 351, be prepared for us to probably can close this gap and even test this. And it is possible we can even come test this because you have some uh, candles here. Again, don't think it's gonna happen simply because this is a nice bullish reversal. Um, so just something to be mindful of. If we do gap up, I'd be looking for us to gap up to about 354. From 354, look for us to go to 356. So these are the areas of the zones that you need to pay attention to uh, for the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, and just to finish us off, let's go look at the VIX. Um, you guys know I love looking at the VIX. So the VIX also tells us how is the market uh, going to be performing. Now, the VIX is critical because when you look at this from a weekly perspective, this is about, this looks like the start of the three black crows. 
And if anybody's took my charting course or anything like that, you know that the three black pros, you know, that's, 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 you know, that pattern. So if we uh, break down, we could probably see the VIX, you know, form something like this, like this type of candle or a little small candle like this. But eventually what I'll be looking for to do is, hey, do we break down on the VIX and come to these, you know, 15.18 level, possibly even coming down to 14? Um, but as long as the VIX remains low, the market should continue to go up. Uh, we could have a slight bounce come Monday, which is why if we gap up and uh, if we gap up, what, would, what that would mean is that the VIX would probably gap down on Monday where you see here. But once it touches, it's going to shoot up and be green. Right. And that's going to kind of cause that reversal that we'll see on the spot. So we'll be open green and then we'll probably close red. So that's just something to pay attention to. But other than that, even then, I still think that this is. Uh, on a downward trajectory. So, uh, but it does have some gaps. Got to pay attention to the gaps. Even the VIX fills its gaps. So the VIX, you know, it's got some gaps to the upside up to the, about that 18.39 um, is really where I'd be paying attention to. But as long as the VIX remains under 20, we're fine, right? Once the VIX gets over 20, that's typically a sign of a correction. So as long as we can stay on the 18, we'll be fine. And these will just be, it'll, we're pretty much going back to that normal environment where it's going to be slow, steady, grind up not going to be huge volatility spikes or anything like that. So, you know, just kind of pay attention to that. Keep your eye on that. The U.S. 10-year, I need you all to really keep your eye on this over the next coming months because this is one of the things, and as we progress and as we get into later in the year, I'll talk more about this as far as just my thesis about the first quarter of 22 because uh, I think it could get pretty ugly uh, depending on how things play out. Um, but what I'm paying attention to is, once this U.S. 10-year gets above 175, we need to pay attention because if it can get some strength, um, we can definitely see it push 195. And when it gets through 195, I'm showing you this from a monthly perspective because when it gets through 195, this thing could really turn up and it could push to about 2.3 to 2.4. Now, depending on the speed of that rally, is really going to, it can rock the stock market. It could, because look what happened last January, February, and March of this year. It got real aggressive, and we had that big, you know, I won't say big, but we had a decent size correction on the NASDAQ early in the year. If this pattern repeats January, February, and March, if this pattern repeats, then um, it could cause a correction like it did earlier this year. And as you can see, I extrapolated that data. All I did was take this trend line. I went to the bottom from January to the top of March. And then I took it and I said, hey, if we get to January uh, of 22 and we're at 19 or I'm sorry, we're at 175, right? We're at 175 because that's where I think we'll probably end the year at. And so from, uh, from January, shit, from January to March, Look where if we extrapolate in proof, it actually puts us at about two five. And again, it matches up because we're proofing. Look there, when it got to this 175, look at this big ass green candle right here. It went up 30% in a month. Now I ain't saying the US 10 year is gonna do that, but that's why I said pay attention to the speed because once it gets to 175, it has no real resistance till it gets to about 2.37, 2.4. So just be mindful of that. Please be mindful of that because that's going, you know, send some shockwaves. Now to the downside, you know, maybe it gets rejected and it's going to consolidate in this zone for a little while, but I don't see rates going down. I mean, we're in a growing economy, so downside is limited. Let me just say that. Um, and just to wrap us up, we're going to wrap it up with Bitcoin and Ethereum because uh, a lot of people ask me, well, like, yo, how do you kind of know that the market might bounce? Bitcoin, that's kind of how I knew. Bitcoin is a risk on asset um, and I've been paying attention. And when Bitcoin bounced back here in September I, and it started running, I was like, hmm, maybe the market's gonna do the same thing. So like, don't get overly bearish. So uh, when we look at Bitcoin right now um, at its current state, uh, it's at 60,600. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, if we go to a weekly, 
you got the three white soldiers, so a nice bullish pattern. So what do we what will we be expecting? I'm expecting for um, probably a little bit of consolidation, not a full breakout yet, because you got to take into uh, account the mindset of the market and psychology. There's people who bought up in here, the shit tanked, and now they got a chance to get out even. They're going to start selling up here. You got people who bought down here who say, hey, I made a decent profit. I'm going to take profit, right? So um, I think there will be enough pressure to where, you know, Bitcoin could consolidate a little while, but ultimately it's ready for a big breakout. And the big breakout might start uh, around November. Keep in mind, they got those Bitcoin ETFs that are about to start trading on the market. That's going to be a big, big boost to Bitcoin. Um, a lot more institutional money will be entering the game. Uh, well, late money, because all the smart money was buying when it was at 30K. I tried, I definitely said that. Um, and so what to expect is like, basically you can see it's already starting to consolidate. So we could probably, probably get another big push. I do think we'll challenge all time highs, which is gonna be around 65K. Um, if you know Bitcoin, it does like to kind of run in uh, increments of 5,000. So you go from 50 to 55, 55 to 60. So it only makes sense for it to go from 60 to 50, uh, 60 to 65. Um, so it's very possible we could get to 65. And then again, we start a little bit of a consolidation phase between 65 down to about 58K or so. Um, and so that's what I'll be, you know, kind of paying attention to on Bitcoin. And you can see it consolidated when it got up in this area last time. So if I just highlight this box area, give me one second. Right here, right? It's, it's, it's probably going to do that same thing. It'll shoot up and then we can probably see a little bit of consolidation into this before it starts to make its next move. Uh, and long term targets, I got Bitcoin going to roughly... We could see Bitcoin going to about 77 to 91K by the end of the year. That's what I'm aiming for. So, you know, keep me honest. I'll keep updates. We'll, you know, keep going with it. But I'm thinking December, January, we could see Bitcoin pushing anywhere from 77 to 91K. So you heard it here first. Remember that. Um, so that's Bitcoin, y'all. As far as pullback, like I said, watch out for the 58. Could come back down to 53, 52. So... Congrats to all of those who were buying Bitcoin down here and also bought here because great entry. Uh, let's look at Ethereum. From Ethereum, y'all know we've been rocking with Ethereum since 1700 um, and been following that chart for a good minute. So when you look at it from a monthly perspective, uh, this is the lightning bolt that I'll be talking about. See how it goes up, down, up, down, and back up. Nice lightning bolt effect. Uh, so when we look at Ethereum, listen, Ethereum is showing hella bullishness. If we hold this price right here, or even if we close up here, we definitely go on to 4,394, 4,400 to challenge all-time highs. And then if we break that, then next price target for me is probably about 5,000, um, but it could keep running. A after we get above 4,394, yeah, you know, um, the best thing for me to probably do would just be the proof. And so if I were to proof, I would take, um, this trading zone here and then just place it about there and again that puts me at like I said 5200 so uh, that would be the next logical target and then if you go from 52 and you want to say hey if it keeps breaking out what's the next logical target uh, would be to proof some more and if we proof more 6500 so you see I have a target of 63 so that's kind of like what I'm looking for. So, you know, if Bitcoin get to 7791 by the end of the year, we could probably see Ethereum go to 52 to 6300 uh, by the end of the year. Um, far as downside or just where can you possibly get back in? Um, ultimately, good buying levels was that 2700, 2800. You can see it came down and tested it, got two rejection, two rejection wicks. So, this was prior resistance. It is now support. Uh, and I think the same thing is going to happen with this 3440 or, you know, about 3400. It is prior resistance is probably now going to be support, right? So if I change this to a line, look at that. So it looks like this thing is ready to break the hell out. So it'll probably break out. And then eventually the shit will come back down to 4,000. <laughs> That's just how it goes, right? So it's going to break out. Then it's going to come back down to 4,000. So 
That's just how I go. Um, and so, yeah, so that's the charts for the week, guys. That, those are the charts for the week uh, that we're going to review. Like I said, I, I was trying to get through that as fast as possible so I could get on to the next video. Uh, so, again, later this week, um, I'm going to be dropping a pretty dope video on how I personally develop my fundamental and technical thesis. I think it'll be very helpful for people to just hear my thought process, and then you can try to use that to come up with your own. So, um, hopefully y'all like this video. Hopefully these levels help. Again, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, feel free to drop a comment below as far as what other videos that you would like to see me do. Um, I definitely want to get back more to um, actual tangible practical videos and not just so much going over levels. We can always do that, but um, you know, there's questions that people have and really want to get to the down and dirty. And so I really want to help you guys with that. So I, I have some backlog um, ideas, but I want to hear from you guys. So make sure you drop a comment down below. And of course, until next Sunday, man, y'all know the phrase, stay blessed. Peace out.